What's up everyone? It's your girl Stephanie and today I am sharing a craft with you all that I've been doing pretty consistently for the past couple years and that is plastic canvas. I made this little Valentine's Day gift for Lennon, Jen's son. I don't know, I just had this idea that just popped in my head that I really wanted to make something for Lennon every year for Valentine's Day. Like I wanted to give him something handmade. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what I'm gonna do next year because this is probably one of my favorite things I've ever made. I designed it myself, so it's the first time I've ever designed um, something from plastic canvas myself, and I just feel like it's very complete. Hopefully you can tell that this is a little boom box, um, and then you can open it up, and I have it fully lined. This is my second time lining something too. And inside we have these little cassettes, so I did five of these, with five songs. I was already planning on making this, but as I was kind of planning and starting, I was thinking it'd be cool to film because it's the first time I've ever designed anything. This thing definitely took um, a lot longer than I thought, so I know that this is coming out like right before Valentine's Day. Clearly, you can't make this for like tomorrow <laughs> but it's also such a cute thing to make for like an anniversary oh my god you know like your love songs with your partner or songs that remind you of them and in general i just wanted to introduce y'all to plastic canvas if you've never heard of it before this video is long because i really didn't plan on being so comprehensive and step by step but then it ended up being that way. So this is kind of like a introduction to plastic canvas plus like all the tips and tricks that you need to know. Here's a couple other things like these are little um, <laughs> tissue box houses that I made. This one's obviously for Christmas. Then the tissues come out of the chimney. And then this is just the one that I have in my bathroom. I just think it's so cute and you can make bags and like a bunch of things. Um, these are from Hirschner's. That's where I first got introduced to plastic canvas and they have kits that you can buy. So it comes with a yarn, needle, everything. There are Etsy shops that like have photographed old magazines and stuff with old designs and they just sell the designs. So like individually, like for a couple dollars each. I'll make sure to link, of course, everything down below. But I would say if you're a beginner to like anything to do with stitching, you wanna get into like cross stitching or embroidery. This is 100% the easiest thing that you can do. And also the cheapest, definitely. All right, I know I'm making this introduction so long, but I really did wanna mention this as well because while I was making this, I realized that my very first YouTube video I made was a Valentine's Day tutorial. It was a little sweetheart Valentine's Day magnets. And then I realized that that was 10 years ago. So this is my 10 year anniversary on YouTube and just, I feel like everything's come so full circle because that first video, Jen helped me film it. In Oakland, I remember we were 20, 22? Yeah, we were 22. She encouraged me just to like make videos for fun because I had things I wanted to share. And here we are, which is incredible. And now, I'm making something for her son <laughs> 10 years later. I just think it's so special that this happened like this. So yeah, let's get into the video. This is plastic canvas. It comes in large sheets. You buy them <laughs> in packs. They just come like this. Okay, so we have these two pieces. So this one is the front piece. So it'll look like this. This is the back piece, which I think I'm just gonna do in all gray. We have two side panels, so like that. One of them's gonna have just like a little knob, and I'll talk about these circular pieces in a second. The top and bottom pieces. One of the pieces is gonna look like this. I want it to look like there's, you know, buttons and stuff. And then I have this longer piece for the strap up top. Typically, I measure out every single piece, but for this one, um, I kind of just did it by feel. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, like that size looks good. So I think that'll be fine. Here we have 
some perfect circles and you can obtain a circular shape with yarn but it can be a little bit difficult and I kind of like a three-dimensional look that these can be on top like that. For these ones, I pretty much just cut them down to the size that I thought looked good. Before moving on to the yarn, I just wanna mention this is a little extra that I have here. Um, I just wanted to put Lennon's name on this somewhere. It kinda looks like it's a logo. I feel like I'm gonna switch this black to a yellow so I can put black in the background here. We'll see. These two are the closures. So it's gonna be on top. Here is the yarn that I'm going to use. Let me just show you one of these. I've done a few plastic canvas projects at this point. They've all been from Hirschner's. I just have a bunch of extra yarn from their kits because I'm pretty frugal when it comes to using the yarn. When I start a new project, I will like save yarn from old projects. This is what you would call, I guess, like a worsted weight yarn. If you were to look at the back label, it would be a four, a medium weight, but you can use a variety of weights, honestly. This is the most basic, just acrylic, worsted weight yarn, not expensive, does not cost a lot to get this kind of yarn. Also, I just wanna show you this. So this is really like part of the inspiration for making this guy. Um, it's my first time making like a little box from plastic canvas where I also like lined it too. This is my first time lining anything. So yeah, this is, I just been keeping some of my notions in here. This is actually the first thing that I've ever, ever made on YouTube, which is so funny. And I think I'm coming up, oh my gosh, I think this is like my 10 year anniversary because I made this for, valentine's day wait this is crazy i'm just realizing this right now i made this for valentine's day 10 years ago and now we're doing another valentine this is wild okay i just have a little magnet inside of there it's supposed to be for like the fridge but what i started using it for is uh my my needles. So what I'm using here are tapestry needles. It has a large hole to thread and it's fairly blunt. So, I mean, you can see there's an indent because I really pressed my finger, but you're really not gonna hurt yourself, which is great. Future editing Stephanie here. I've been trying to edit the, the part of the video where I teach you how to read instructions and how to sew plastic canvas and it's just painful. So I'm redoing it here. So here you can see my little mock-up. In kits, a lot of the time it will look similar to this. Here's uh, that little box that I made. All the color here, I, I colored in because sometimes they will just give you symbols and then leave areas blank that are like fill in. Visually for me, I end up coloring everything in myself because it's so much easier for me to count my stitches and look at the rows and stuff. Here you can see they just put little flowers for the red, these circles for the blue, and then they kept the uh, filler blank, which I decided to make like an ecru, which is like a cream color. So when we're looking at this one right here, especially when it comes to cutting out the plastic canvas pieces. I've done this plenty of times where I cut it short and that's because I'm counting the spaces, these spaces instead of the bars. A few instructions I've seen call <laughs> the actual plastic part bars. So that's what I'm gonna call them. This little piece has one, two, three, four, five spaces one, two, three, four, five, six bars. And that's the important thing to count when you're cutting out your pieces. On my little mock-up here, 
I didn't make it a traditional X, Y axis because I started it on one and I counted 10 spaces and then it was 11. Another 10 spaces and then it's 21. So if you just keep that in mind, it's important to count the bars as much as the spaces. Trial and error, you will figure it out. But let me just now go to showing you how to actually <laughs> do this. So this is how I thread my tapestry needle here. It's got a pretty large eye. What I'll do is I'll just grab the yarn and I will smush it together, like smush it in half and then smush it together. And I'll get my tapestry needle and I'll just kind of wiggle it and then grab it. And you can see I have no nails. I cut my nails really short and I can grab that. So then we're gonna pull it through. And at this point, we're not gonna, we, we don't knot anything in plastic canvas. If you've done cross stitching before, it's exactly like that, except you're not doubling back to make the X's. Think about your stitches in terms of like this square right here, because we're gonna go from the lower corner of the square to the upper corner of the square, and that's gonna be one stitch diagonal. We're gonna go in the lower left corner, and we're gonna go from underneath up, pull it through, so what I'm doing here with a little tail is I am just holding it with my other finger. Oh, and by the way, I am left-handed. So hopefully this isn't confusing to most of you, but this is not like knitting where it really matters, I guess, which hand you're using. It's pretty much the same, I think, for a right-handed person. Let me know if you do cross stitching or anything, if you start on the right side, but I feel like a lot of people start on the left side anyways. So, sorry, we are in the bottom left corner. We're gonna go through the top right corner and I'm holding the little tail in the back. That's our first stitch. Now we're gonna go to the space directly next to our first one. We're never skipping. So even though this is a box, now this is a box directly next to it. And we're going through the top right. And what I did when that happened was I was holding this piece of thread, right? So my next stitch actually secured the thread underneath it. So from the backside, this is what the next stitch would look like. There we go. And you can pretty much let it, let it go at that point. We did another from the back up, the lower left corner, upper right. And as you go faster, and you'll kind of get used to what your tension is, but I do not pull the yarn super taut. You need to be able to push your needle underneath in the back, and if it's super tight, then it's difficult to do. So here we are at the end of our row. Here we have finished the first row, left to right. Now we're gonna do a row right to left, and it's kind of the opposite of left to right because we are going to pull the needle up through the upper right corner now down to the lower left. We are using the same space, I'm getting a little mixed up here, that we used in the first row. If your uh, stitch is like down here, that's there's clearly like, if you can see a bar of plastic canvas, that is not right. Upper right, lower left. Right, lower left. And like I said, you're always coming in from the back and putting the needle in. You're coming up from the back, up from the back, and down, up from the back and down. Okay, we're gonna get to the, the last stitch here 
of this row. I'm gonna show you how to finish this off now. Say we're done with this color. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flip to the back. And you could do two if you want. I typically do three. And you're gonna bring your needle, kind of wiggle it underneath your three previous stitches. And we're gonna pull it through. And there we go. Say you just have like three stitches. It's hard to undo this yarn and it's okay to double back on itself. Okay, say we're just doing three stitches here and that's it. I will just go back and go under here. I kind of like hold it with my thumb. And there we go. We have the yarn going one way and the other and it's not going anywhere. Okay, I think I covered it. Let's get back to the project. We're done with that row over here. We're gonna go down for two stitches. One, two, count the cross section this little section here. So one cross section, two cross section, three cross section. So that would be three stitches. And now I'm gonna come in to the fourth one and start up. And in the back, we have this kind of skip. I wouldn't necessarily do this. I would kind of like figure out rows and stuff so I wouldn't have to do that and skip around, but it is perfectly fine to do that as well. Pretty much, I'm gonna do every single piece except for the front piece now. Cause all these, I, I just have to make them light gray. We're gonna come back for the front piece and the circles. Hi everyone, it's the next day. As you can see, I have some completed items here. I have the strap, um, the side panels, top and bottom. And okay, so this is the back panel. It was supposed to just be plain. And then as I was doing it, I don't know, I thought I could make it more interesting. So I tried to make it look like, you know, the back of a boom box. Obviously I didn't plan this before, um, but I kind of like ended up drawing this out last night. This was also a good time for me to show you like a different way that you can stitch. So clearly you can see these ones are like straight stitches across to give it uh, a different a different look. There's the back there. Sorry I didn't show you doing this part, but it kind of was a spontaneous uh, little addition yesterday. So today we are going to now start on this part right here. I always begin with the dominant color or I guess the filler color. It really um, creates a nice little mold for the smaller sections to go into. And also if you do the smaller sections first, you really run the risk of, or a higher risk of miscounting your stitches and positioning them incorrectly. So here you're seeing me stitch at 500%. This is pretty much the highest that I could go where you could kind of see what I'm still doing. Just doing all of the light gray took me 54 minutes. I've never timed myself, but uh, since I was filming it, I could see how long this took. And obviously you can see there's a lot less for me to stitch for the other colors, so it's gonna take me a little bit less time. Stitching the final stitches of the front panel. I did switch up a couple of the colors and I think it's looking pretty good. Now it's time to do some outlining. I know on my little picture here, I have this green section and I have this red section. These were actually just like kind of place markers for the beads. Um, I did this one, but then I realized I'm not really sure about the placement of this one. So 
Um, yeah, I didn't put any green down. Just FYI, if you're wondering. I am going to just thread this in three here. Check this out. A little grippy here. So, oh, wow. See? Amazing. All the way there. Pretty much four individual boxes. I'm going to come up from behind here. Here. You kind of just go with the flow and try and complete a section that you're on. Like, don't like go from here, like, you know, over to the other side. And in some cases, you know, you'd want to do like a long stitch, but because there's four boxes here, I like to. separate them. Okay, so we're just gonna keep going. Also for this, you kind of, um, you need to get more thread or yarn, I mean, on your needle than you think because you are back stitching so much. I hope I have enough actually, I think I do. Back, I'm gonna go up. Typically what I do is I try not to cross or go diagonal. See, I guess there, there is a pattern in the back. I try not to cross or go um, diagonally. So I kind of caught some gray there. Okay. And now the last one. Across and up. Yay! <laughs> Sometimes when I have kind of like loose ones like this, I'll stick it into a bundle here that's already has another um, piece of yarn through it. So then it'll be like really tight. Okay, and it'll also kind of like hide the black in the front too. So here we go, we're all nice and outlined. Do 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 do. We are all lined up. Now time for some speakers. Okay, so I actually switched over to a smaller, like a bit smaller needle. It's just gonna be a little bit easier, I think. One, two, three is kind of making you can kind of see these quarters happening <laughs> there are dogs licking each other next to me right now um so i'm gonna start from here let me go let me just grab and then just bring that piece just over we're gonna go through the center And now this one through the center. If you kind of see, there are like these V's. So I'm gonna be like cross, cross, cross in. Oops, I keep bumping the camera. Oh because I'm pulling like this. 
Man, that one was difficult. Do I want to go over? No, I want to go through. Let's see. How do I want to do this? Go through to the next one and then wrap it in the same hole. Oof. I'm actually like so hungry right now, so I'm like starting to shake. <laughs> I'm gonna go up, there's a, a little cross section, and I'm gonna go up. There we go. Like that, and I'm gonna come, oh, it's tight. Oof. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna stick it here, see what happens. Oh my god. I need a break before the other one. I mean, this is not going anywhere, but I will just do that. It's pretty much the same deal, obviously, with these little guys. I'm just going to do the outside first and then the crisscross in the center. And then, of course, this guy after this we have to sew on the beads all the lining and sew it together hi everyone all right we're actually in the next evening a few things have been accomplished here so as you can see here put the little speakers on i added some beads for buttons and i put the linen on there used regular thread and sewed each bead in two times. And here you can see I have all of the lining prepared. Doing this project, you absolutely do not need to put lining. Like I have other projects I've done where, you know, it just looks like this on the inside. Everything just has to be measured out really nicely. So if I show you the back here, uh, the lining is just slightly smaller than the panel or piece. After I cut everything out, then I did an initial iron to get the shape down. Um, and then I actually used something called Easy Steam. It's one-sided pressure sensitive fus fusible web, which I didn't do this for my other project. I thought that by kind of sealing this up, it would make sewing the backing onto the panels so much easier. So even though the preparation was really tedious and long, I think in the long run, it was worth it for me. I feel like that doesn't even make any sense to anybody, but I cut out little strips of that fusible web. So one side is sticky, so you can stick it onto one piece, and if you fold it over and iron it, it'll stick. You know, this whole project is a little bit of an experiment for me. I'm gonna quickly show you how I slip stitch this piece onto the panel. Uh, I've done this one already. So as you can see, it's an invisible stitch there. It's a really easy, simple stitch. We have this panel here that goes with this. So first of all, I'm gonna go through the back and just come up like in the middle. There we go. And I'm gonna line it up with the panel. We are lined up with this space here. So I'm gonna pull the needle through and just move one space over and bring it back. And then what I'm gonna do is parallel to that stitch, put the needle through and kind of let it just slide across. Hmm, this, is a, this much. Like you don't really have to be too picky, just as long as you think that it's gonna be all sealed up and nice. 
And actually, once I go around, I double back to end like in the middle of this one. So we're going to go to the space parallel to that stitch, come back up the next one, bring the needle in. And then around the corners, I don't know if this is right. This is just what I've been doing. I bring the needle up uh, to the second space. Let's see, like, right, hello. There. And yeah, so I'm not sure if this is correct, by the way, but it worked for me, so. And I'm gonna pull it through, push it through. And then we're at this corner space and I bring it up through the corner space and I actually bring it from the other side and I'll just kind of do like a triangle here. Push the needle through like that. Honestly, this worked for me, but I'm not sure <laughs> if this is correct at all but just to secure the corners better. And then I'm gonna bring it back through the corner space and then up the second space. So that's how I secure the corners. I have never done a slip stitch before making that first box. So, or I don't, at least I don't think I have but it's a really easy stitch and it, it's very satisfying because it makes everything look so clean. And you don't have to worry about like, oh, do my stitches like look good or not? We're now at the very end. My first stitch is right here. I don't know if this is necessary, but I tend to come under and just surpass that first stitch. bring the needle up. So this is like in between the first and second little loops here. And all you need to do now is do a simple knot. Get it nice and tight. Little knot there. Oops, my needle came off. Let me put that back on. By the way, I'm just using like um, button thread. I have this other, like my other white thread is like even thicker, but this one is just, yeah. Oh, it's heavy, heavy thread. And okay. What I'm gonna do is bring the needle like right next to the knot and I'm gonna Pull it through like that. Good. Get the cut the string there and then let it disappear into the backing. And there we go. Honestly, this piece is like my most unbalanced piece because the ends are, are it's a little bit too long but it's still gonna work out. Before putting the backing on a couple of these pieces, I made this little braid here, two of them, to be the loops for the closures. So like this loop right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do this part off camera because it's pretty much a bunch of finagling. Like I'm gonna put these beads, attach them, just pretty much thread them through and knot them in the back. And then this is like how it's gonna open. So I have to figure out exactly where I should put this loop so that it will go around the bead and stay. All right, everyone, we're all lined up, ready to go. I added the little closure loops. I think this is looking so cute. Like, I don't know. I think it looks really, really good. And um, we have the beads that I added 
up top as well. And now it's just time to put it all together. So we're gonna do something called an overcast stitch. Uh, it's a really easy, just connecting all the pieces together. I think the most, uh, not challenging, but thing you really have to plan out. I don't really like to use little bits and pieces of yarn. So I try and create uh, a route that we go so that we're using whole pieces of yarn. If that makes sense, I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna start off in this corner, go around and if we have enough yarn, we're gonna start going, building up. Okay, so I'm going to have the insides facing each other. So we're gonna go through First loop. And through that loop. The parallel space there. So this is a straight across stitch right at the beginning. And then we're going to be going diagonal. So we're in the back here and I'm just going to push it from the front to the back and make sure that piece of yarn is on the inside. And we're just going to continue doing that. Once you get into a rhythm with this one too, it's pretty, pretty easy. So yeah, I'm just going to do the row and then I'll show you what I do at the corners. At this stage, what I like to do is just like at the very, very beginning, I'm gonna do another stitch that is just straight across. Okay. And I'm not gonna be going up this one. I'm I'm Playing on doing all of the side pieces connected to the back first because you can do what I just did, which is kind of like hold it flat and not have to hold it at a 90 degree angle. But here you go. First piece connected. And from here, now I'm going to add this second piece. I know there's really proper ways to do this, but... I just go through this piece and then the first hole of the next piece that I'm sewing. And then we're doing a straight across that. And we can continue on here. It's really like so much trial and error and what starts to feel right for you. Also, when it comes to the edges of the pieces, you do the same thing. For example, like for the handle, just gonna be up top here. I'm not gonna leave these edges bare. I'm gonna overcast, even though I'm not connecting it to anything, I'm you know finishing the edges. Let me go ahead and keep on overcasting. Hi everyone, check it out. We're all done. I am so in love with this little thing. Let's just open this up so I can show you the inside. Oh, look, our little loops here. And we open it up and our cassettes are inside. I'll talk about that in a second. Like I said, you could do this and not have the lining at all. Like it's totally not necessary, but you will have all your stitches on the back exposed. By the way, I got this little label made um, from a website. I can't remember it now, but it was literally the first thing that popped up when I looked up handmade labels or something. I'll, I'll definitely make sure to link it down below. So let's just talk about the finishings here. Obviously, we have the little braided guys here that go around the buttons. Um, I made this little lanyard just as a little extra guy because when I had a boom box, I hung things from it, so <laughs> I thought it'd be cute to do this. Also, by the way, like friendship bracelet, lanyard things, it's really hard. This took me a minute. I think because I was doing it with embroidery floss, you know, so it's very little, 
but oh wait actually there we go this is the side that looks good <laughs> obviously overcasted all the handles and then the back does it look like there's a little battery that can pop out here yeah i just really love it so let's talk about the cassettes really fast so i just made these out of cardboard i like it's like a I don't know what you call this, like a one ply cardboard. And I colored them all black with a marker. Uh, I guess the additional things that I cut out were one like colored piece of paper, another black piece, two white, and then I did a white rectangle. And then I colored in where, you know, it looks like the tape. I just colored in a piece of paper with this gray. And on the back of each of them, I have the little Spotify code. Uh, paired up with a love song. So we have Mazzy Star, Fade Into You, Honey, Erica Badu, Music Sounds Better With You, Stardust, Baby, Donnie and Joe Emerson, and Maps. Yeah, yeah, yes. I wanted to do a, like a good variety. I, I had all this like, you know, The Cure, The Smiths, but I wanted to have fun ones too. <laughs> I actually looked at the dimensions of a cassette tape. So this is pretty much like the size. I mean, the corners aren't really right, but this is the size of a cassette tape. And then we stick it in there and we close it up. The closures are a little bit tight, but you know, I feel like over time, honestly, embroidery floss does stretch out a bit. Hopefully this is something that, um, you know, they'll keep around. For a while. <laughs> I plan to make this in um, three days. I was like, three days? Plan that. I can do this in three days. It took me like, over seven for sure of like doing it every day. But that was from, I don't know, I guess I'm counting like drawing out the plans and everything as well. I had initially planned for this video to just kind of be a watch me craft or let me introduce you to plastic canvas and it became very comprehensive because I don't know how to be casual about things. So I hadn't really planned for like other people to make it, um, but I can post my like mock-up on Instagram. That's what I think I'm gonna do. Or is there another place that I could like create a PDF and post it? Maybe is Ravelry the place? Do they? include oh no I, I feel like that's just like knitting and crocheting and stuff i don't know if it includes stuff like this if you know of a place where i could do that <laughs> i can post it on there too i'll definitely post it on my instagram stories and i'll i'll save it so if you go to my instagram give me a follow but also find my little drawing it's not perfect but it gives you at least the dimensions i told my friend mia that i would make her a handbag out of plastic canvas so pretty much just a larger version of this with a different design and that is actually from um, a design that i found on etsy and i think i'm just gonna vlog that yeah i think that'll be fun because that'll be my first like actual i mean i guess it's a little handbag but actual handbag or that kind of accessory um that i will make if you've watched this far thank you so much and again thank you for 10 years on youtube y'all have seen me through a third of my life. I'm really so grateful for y'all, especially uh, the last couple years. Uh, yeah, you don't know how much your support means to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I really love y'all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.